In today's video, the star of the show will be the Skywatcher GTI, and I'm going to be reviewing this on the channel. Yeah, I'm super excited to put this one out because this has been something that I'm super excited to be using for the next few years, if everything goes planned. In today's video, I'm going to be photographing the Owl and Surfboard Galaxy for you guys as a prime example to see how good this mount can really track objects that are really far away. In galaxies, they are super far away. And what better way to kick off a little preview of the galaxy season, right? By photographing photographing the first galaxy of the whole year. So come along with me as I review this telescope mount and I'm gonna be going over all the specs of this mount and making sure that you guys can make an educated decision on if you want to purchase this mount for your setup and if it fits well with yours as well. If you're new to the channel, my name is Ash Rotan and welcome to the backyard. Let's hit it. Guys, I'm gonna keep it real with you. I have no idea what is happening in my yard. You know, every time I come out here, there's always something like, oh, there's my dog's poop again that I just cleaned up like two weeks ago. Oh, here's a broken thing from our little staircase or whatever that is. And then I come over here after a night of imaging and my setup is literally pointing like this. I told it to park. What is happening? All right, so if you guys are new to the channel, let me give you guys a little bit of backstory on what happened and why I have this new mount. Well, as you guys know, I have had my iOptron GEM28 for a very long time because it replaced my Skywatcher EQM35 Pro. That guy is gone. So now that that guy is out of the picture, I really liked the iOptron GEM28, but unfortunately, that guy broke. And it's gonna have to be sent in for a grand total of $240. And hate to be the bearer of bad news, but I don't have that money because I'm trying to work my butt off so I can go to college and not have to worry about money as much. Yeah, I'm gonna be a broke college student soon, so I need to make sure I need to prioritize what I have, sell the things I need to sell, so. Yeah, we're gonna have to make some sacrifices. But that's when I bought this telescope mount, the Skywatcher GTI, the Star Adventure GTI to be exact. I also needed this mount for college because I needed a smaller lightweight setup that I'm gonna be able to carry with me in one trip so I can set up on the campus right there and then, not have to worry about going two trips to my dorm and that'll be a great idea and that was a great purchase. And I'm safely saying that this mount has really lived up to my expectations far more. So let's get a little bit more into it. Now I'm sure you guys can tell that this mount is a lot smaller than the mount that I normally have been using on this channel. Yeah, it is significantly smaller. It's probably around twice as small, maybe a one and a half times smaller, but that really does claim its name to fame as the go-to functionality and ASCOM compatible version of the popular Skywatcher Star Adventure 2i. Now that telescope mount is a little bit different than this one in a, in a lot of various ways. The first reason is, well, you notice that this one is a little bit more beefy than the Star Adventure 2i original version, and that's because this has go-to functionality. And go-to functionality means that this telescope can literally point to anything in the sky that you tell it to. Yeah, pretty crazy, right? Well, that's what a lot of astrophotography mounts do, and in a sense for imaging, this is what a lot of mounts do computer controlled, so that means that software kind of takes care of that on its own. If you're using this for a visual mount or just wanna kind of scan the sky a little bit, you can connect this to your phone via the SynScan app and you can tell this thing to point to wherever it wants. And I have tested this and it works great because I use this for planets with my new Celestron 6 inch reflector telescope that I have. And it's pretty funny that they call this the Star Adventure GTI because that GT part does in fact mean go to. Now I want to note that included in the box of getting a Skywatcher GTI, you can actually get it in a lot of various ways. Starting with the first way, you can get just the mount head itself or you can get the mount and the tripod itself. Now this mount does include counterweights for up to 11 pounds of payload which means that this telescope can hold 11 pounds of total weight on top of it before things start to go a little bit haywire. So please do not overmount this mount because I'm telling you right now you will not get the results you want if you overmount your telescope setup. Now my telescope specifically came with a five pound counterweight and then a two and a half pound counterweight so a little bit different than other GTI mounts but it works just the same. It balances my setup perfectly, so voila. All right, now let's kind of go over the features of this mount itself. Now, going straight into this, you'll notice that you have a clutch right up here. This is for adjusting your declination balance and... Oh boy, I am not balanced. And you'll also notice that you have a little knob here. This is for adjusting your right ascension 
for balance and making sure that you have all these clutches tied. Oh, perfect. I balance is awesome. So make sure that you have these clutches locked when you're ready to get locked and loaded on shooting some wonderful objects from the night sky. Once you have all that tightened up, you probably want to think about polar aligning. And the great thing about this telescope mount is that it has a built-in polar scope reticle, which is good because some of them don't, the more advanced ones. But this one also has an illuminated polar scope, which means that the inside of this literally is red, which is perfect because then you could see where to polar align your telescope hole with Polaris. So you don't have to do a flashlight out here in the middle of the mount to make sure that you can see what you're doing. Now, once you start polar aligning, this thing is super easy. You just move these left and right knobs here to kind of move the mount like so. And once those are done, just make sure you tighten these up and then to adjust the mount up and down in latitude, you can unscrew these tightener knobs and move the mount up and down with the little forward screw up here. Now I want you guys to note that it does have Wi-Fi compatibility, so if you guys didn't believe me, there you have it. And you'll see you have a little control system here, or I guess a little motherboard if you wanna call it that. You have an Auto Guider SD4 cable port right here, and you also have a hand controller port if you live in the Stone Age, because back then, you know, we used a lot of those, but now we just use our computers and our phones, so. Hey, that's completely fine, bro, completely fine. I love the hand controllers, but not for me anymore. And you also have your power switch right here, to connect to power. This requires 12 volts of power, just so you guys know that. And this also includes a USB 2.0 cable to plug in to your computer, like I do on my mini PC right here. And once you're all locked and loaded, everything's plugged in, all you can do is just flip the switch right there and you'll notice that it blinks a little bit. That's completely normal. That just means that it's ready to go and it's ready to connect to something. And once it's done connecting to something, that light will not blink anymore. It'll be a solid red. Now I do want to keep you guys in mind that this telescope for polar alignment you cannot polar align the telescope just like this, which is actually pretty crazy. The way that you polar align this, and this is with a lot of Skywatcher mounts, is before you even do anything, you can't see anything because the mount bar actually covers the polar scope reticle. So you're, all you're gonna have to do to be able to see Polaris is just move this reticle right here and you will see that everything is ready to go and you can see Polaris once you move it in this direction. This may bother some people, but I don't find that it bothers me because it already moves my telescope away from my head when my giant fat head is gonna be right over here looking to try to align this thing. So I don't have a problem with it at all, so. And then obviously once you're done polar aligning, you can just move this thing back and there you go you are ready to go. Now I bought my mount with a tripod and as you can see, the tripod matches the telescope mount beautifully and that was a solid $90 to add to the price of this. And I paid around 700-ish dollars for this whole setup. So just to keep you guys in mind, I will post the links below to this telescope so you guys know the exact price of it. And if you want to purchase anything else on my setup, make sure you check my affiliate links down below. Just viewing them or maybe making a small purchase on Amazon helps me out tremendously, helps keep the channel going. So thank you guys so much. I appreciate you guys. The Owl Nebula sits right next to the Surfboard Galaxy, which are the two targets that I'm going after tonight. One, a planetary nebula, and the other one, a galaxy, of course. Spring marks the time of photographing a ton of galaxies because the Milky Way kind of says bye-bye to us for a couple months. That's a little bit fake of the Milky Way, if you ask me. Now, I find it pretty funny that the Owl Nebula is around 2,000 light years away from Earth, and the Surfboard Galaxy, even though it looks that they're right next to each other in the night sky, is actually 45 million light years away from Earth, which is crazy how, how it's kind of like an optical illusion in the night sky. They look so close to each other, but they're really not. And the reason for that is difference in size. The Owl nebula is closer to us to earth but it is smaller than a galaxy of course galaxies are humongous and the surfboard galaxy well even though it's 45 million light years away from earth that guy is absolutely massive it is a massive galaxy so what that means that it basically gives you the illusion that these two objects are close to each other and that they are the same size i'm going to be going unfiltered for this shot and i'm super excited to really get this thing going because Man, new moon, it's unheard of these days. But anyway, here we go. Let's get polar aligned and let's get going. And I will see you guys in probably about 30, 45 minutes when that sun goes down. Peace. All right, you guys, welcome back. It is dark out here and I'm 
the only person out here once again. Boy, these nights are just absolutely wild. I mean, let me show you guys. You know, the bad news though, is that we clouded over, but look at how this thing has been tracking. Yep, um, we got something new right there, if you guys notice. And here's the mount in action, even though we got clouded over, but let me explain a little bit more on how this mount's been doing because boy, this thing, I'm telling you guys, this might be a great purchase for your astrophotography setup. We've been imaging the Owl Nebula and Surfboard Galaxy for quite a while now, and even though it clouded over, I still feel like I gotta give you guys my insight view on the Skywatcher GTI after many months of use, actually. I've done three, five, and 10 minute exposures all and have tested this mount and the stars have been nice and round and I'm so glad that I can rely on this mount because boy it is hard to find reliable mounts out there these days. So at the end of the day do I recommend this mount? Yeah it's freaking awesome and I'm not sponsored or anything I'm just being completely honest this it's amazing it's it's a great mount. Honestly with mounts if you know that they're gonna be good and trustworthy then they are gonna be good and trustworthy so you don't really have a lot to worry about. This mount will perform flawlessly under anything that's 11 pounds so make sure you use a light refractor you can probably push a larger camera lens on there just make sure that everything is you know not so large but you know if you want to go for some wide field astrophotography this mount is amazing if you're out in the desert shooting something crazy bring this mount with you get a wide area of the sky with a light travel friendly setup that's super portable that you can carry in your bag and head out if you're going to be a college student like myself then go for it, get this mount, set it up on your campus, and that's what I hope I'm gonna do. And <laughs> so I feel like I've said all that I needed to say, and I think I deserve a well-needed image reveal of my target that I got tonight, the Owl and Surfboard Galaxy. I hope you guys enjoy the video. I hope you guys consider buying this Skywatcher GTI mount because it's been absolutely amazing. The quality is amazing, it's durable, it, it does everything great. And I can't wait for you guys to see the next video, but time for the image reveal. Thank you guys for watching. Clear skies.